guys, this is Bobby Ratchpoot, and I'm a photographer here in LA. I'm on the uh, Hollywood Raw podcast, and I'm going to tell you guys about the three photos I took that sold for over $100,000. Hey guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up. Let's go. Enjoy. What's up, Bobby? How you doing, bud? So, guys, I'm good. I'm good. So, I, you know, listen, I, these are my favorite episodes because Bobby and I bond over, you know, what we do for a living. There's not many people that do what we do for a living. So when you get to talk to someone, Dax, I don't think, like, I hope you understand. I'm trying to make it, like, it's just like we, we both been through the battles together. So it's just fun and it's interesting and I could talk for hours and that's why, and that's why our audience actually loves these interviews when we have a guy like Bobby on. And Bobby, let me ask you the first, Bobby. Do you want to be called a photographer or paparazzi? Do you get offended by the word paparazzi? Or how do you feel I don't about get that? Offended by that word at all? No, I, I, I would. I am more of a photographer today. I mean, I think I started off as a paparazzi. I, um, the beginning of my career, I'd say I was probably ninety percent paparazzi, ten percent photographer, and you know, seventeen years down the road, I, I think I flipped those numbers around at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How, how does someone fall into this line of work? That's what I'm always curious of. Like, I've heard, obviously, Adam's stories. I've heard the stories of some of the other photographers we've had on the podcast. But what is your story? How did you end up in the streets, photog- uh, you know, taking photos of some of the most famous people in the world? It's crazy. I uh, started off, actually went and did a couple of photography courses back in England. Started about 2002, 2001, 2002. And then I went to a photojournalist school and this was like the first thing in my life that I was ever going to finish because I always dropped out of university and I did this and I did that and it wasn't for me. And uh, it was a one year course. It wasn't a big deal. Right. And about six months into it, one of the teachers turned around and said, you know, my uh, my brother owns a news agency and he really wants you to work for him and. It's a national, it goes to the national newspapers, you know, the sun, the, the mirror. And I was like, bro, this is the first thing I'm ever going to finish in my life, man. <laughs> don't, don't make me drop out of this one as well. But, you know, that's, that's, um, I gave it a go and it was really good. I did, I did good. I enjoyed it. I loved it. And I stayed with them for about a year. The pay was absolutely dreadful. So, I kind of started looking at the horizons and figuring out what to do next. And, uh, and I was really attracted to the paparazzi thing because a couple of uh, other friends of mine that were doing photography with doing path and they were, they were earning some good money (laughs) compared to what I was earning at the time. And, and, uh, I went to London and I went for an interview to become a video guy for a paparazzi agency in London. I don't know if you remember big pictures back in the day, Darren Lyon. Dude, huge. Big pictures was massive. So I, yeah, I remember them for sure. I walked into their office and had a meeting with Darren. And I mm-hmm. brought my portfolio and he opened it up and he was going to give me a videography job in, in, in London. And he went, fucking hell, mate, did you take these? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, can you give me one second? Sure. So I walked out and I was like praying that I'm going to get this job. And I walked back in and he said, how do you feel about going to L.A. for me? I mean, I've got eight months of experience in this game, but I wasn't I wasn't going to talk myself out of this situation. Yeah, let's do it, man. (laughs) And uh, I came to L.A. at the height of all the crazy stuff. 2006, Mm -hmm. Brittany, Lindsay, Paris, all, all the crazy stuff. And uh, it, it, it was a hostile environment, man. <laughs> it was like, whoa, what did I get myself in? But I, I enjoyed it. And that. So let, that's when you first started, though, the money used to be, I mean, the money's changed over the years, you know? So there used to be big money for these photos. Now the photos, I guess if you get the right set of photos, like you can make some good money. But why has there been a price difference? Why were paparazzi making so much money years ago? And now there's actually not as many photographers because there's the money's not there. The money's not there. I mean, that it's changed. Everything's changed in the game. But first and foremost, the internet, social media, Instagram, 
um, all that changed the game. I mean, when I started, people were waiting for Wednesday and Thursday for the magazines to come out. And, and you opened that magazine and it was the first time you ever saw that picture. Mm-hmm. It, it was an exclusive that had been sold, you know, for X amount of money, very good X amount of money. And uh, people were waiting for that. Today, we take a picture and five minutes later, it's, it's somebody on Instagram stolen it off some FTP and it's already everywhere and everybody's already seen it before you had time to sell it. You know, it's, it's certainly changed in that sense. Um, also, the, the, the quantity of pictures of these people that's out there now, you know, everybody's doing a selfie first thing in the morning as they wake up and then before they go to bed, they do another one. So. Oh, yes. I think it, I think it's because everyone is a paparazzi these days. It's not just a guy who's got a, a really beautiful camera in the streets. It's also every single person with their cell phone in their pocket that they pull it out and they snap a photo and, they and then they it. upload it on social media. And now they're also in the paparazzi game because they're getting these people out in the wild as well. And they actually have a better chance than you and me to get that scoop picture mm-hmm. because there's so many of them, whereas you and me, you know, it's, it's a numbers game, really. It's, but you're absolutely right. There's Everybody's a paparazzi now, and everybody's a photographer now. And I hate to admit it, but these cameras are really good on these phones. These yeah. days. I mean, they are. 100%. <laughs> uh, Bobby, how good are you at, like, spotting a celeb? Like, do you, you know, what is your, like, when you can, can you recognize people better than, the average human being? I am absolutely horrible at <laughs> <laughs> I have had so many of these people walk straight past me. And, and you know, the game's changed in, in a lot of ways. Like I say, back in the day, they used to hide from us. Today, a lot of them are coming out intentionally to get photographed. Um, mm-hmm. Whether they like to admit that or not is a different issue, but they, they're walking out. And I feel it sometimes I'm standing somewhere and I've got my camera on my shoulder and they're walking past me and they're staring at me like half upset, like, bro, it's me, man. Take a picture. What are you doing? (laughs) Uh, I'm going to walk past you three more times to see if you recognize me and then maybe you'll pull the camera out. I'd be embarrassed to tell you some of the names that I've done that to, to be honest. (laughs) But but number (laughs) eight. Cars. I'd be I'd be more interested in the people that get mad that you don't shoot them. You're like, oh, do you not recognize me or what? There's been a few. There's been a few. <laughs> one of them even called another paparazzi to show up. He said, "This India outside doesn't recognize me." Can you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's yeah. I'm not that good with faces, but when it comes to cars, um, number plates, I, I, I memorized a lot of them over the years. You know the that sticks and that's usually how i recognize somebody that i photograph not so exp- so that's very interesting that's a very good point and it's something that i don't think we've ever talked about explain to me how you recognize cars and plates and how that works for your industry and how you how that how you make take advantage of that well you know somebody can wear a hat somebody can wear a disguise some masks these days that that wasn't around back in the day you know they're, they're wearing masks but the one thing they can't ever change is their number plate on their car So if you Mm -hmm. memorize part of the number plate or a lot of people have write them down, I don't, I don't like writing them down. I just, the whole idea of it, it sticks in my head and that's it. I'm lucky like that, I guess. But, um, yeah, you see the car, you spot the car, you know, the plate and it doesn't matter if they, you know, got a fake mustache on, you're going to know who's in that car. Well, hopefully sometimes it's not them in the car, but that's, I would say that's crazy. Percent of the time, that's how we find people. Yeah, I have I have never heard anyone talk about this ever. Like, I do not have that kind of photographic memory where I could remember a license plate. So that's wild to me. I mean, I could remember a cool car, especially if it stood out. You know, like a Paris Hilton pink Bentley or something. That that obviously would stand out to me. But I would not remember a, a set of numbers. That's actually very impressive. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that's very calm. I mean, in New York, it's it's like, oh, what car is that? It's T76 because it's like an SUV that they're being driven in. But we, you know, in New York, it's interesting. I feel like we just know drivers because in, in L.A., they're more driving themselves. In New York, it's like, oh, that's a driver who drives a lot of people. Wait on that driver. I've um, noticed so. that when I've been in New York. The guy's like, that's such and such as driver. I'm like, God, how do you even know that? Like, yeah, <laughs> that's the newest for it. Yeah. Over here, it's, it's a lot of number plates. And yeah. So I, I, you... It, yeah, it's funny. So, Bobby, you, you know, you're, you said 
that you started as a paparazzi and then you transitioned to being a photographer. Explain to me how that transition happened and what do you mean that you went from from paparazzi to photographer? Okay, it was the evolution of the game. I mean, when I started this and when you said, are you in, offended by the, by the name paparazzi? When I started this game, it was about bringing scoops. It was about exposing stuff. It was about breaking you know, rumored relationships, rumored breakups. It was about showing people how these celebrities really look, not the way they want you to see them every day. It was about, you know, hiding in the back of your car, shooting from tinted windows and hoping he's going to pick his nose on the way to the car. That's that was <laughs> the game I got into in 2006, you know. Um, that's, it's, it's exactly the opposite now. Now we're here to promote people. Now we're here to raise profile. Now we're here to, you know, I guess their PR machine figured out how to use us in the right way. <laughs> and, and that's where we are now. And, and as much as it was all about ugly pictures and horrible looking, you know, facial expressions at the time when I joined, today it's the absolute opposite. It's absolute. I was going to say, because when I look through your Instagram, which is Bobby underscore Pap underscore LA, it's beautiful photos. Like, like it looks like runway fashion as people walk down the street. Like there's not a bad photo on your Instagram page because it literally is highlighting people's fashion or their hair or their makeup or and just making them look good because I see a lot of these celebs, they treat the street as the runways these days. That's how you get all of these designers to send you clothes and, and makeup and purses and all this stuff is you walk down the street wearing stuff it goes on the websites and now they're like, oh, this person gets photographed enough. I want to send them free clothing. It works for a lot of these celebs. And then some, it's not, you know, there is, you're absolutely on point with that. And, and it's not just free clothing. It's actually getting paid to wear those clothes and walk down the street in them and, and, and the sponsorships. And, and also, as much as, you know, it might not always be an arranged photo shoot, there's certain areas, there's certain space places, there's certain gyms, restaurants that they know we're going to be there. They're completely aware that once they get there, they're going to be photographed. And, and so, Bobby, are when when I see these photos and I I look at them and I go, okay, this is clearly a setup. And it's and I don't knock a setup whatsoever. I say this all the time. I don't knock a setup. I feel like this is just the game, and people learn how to play it. Do you get? Do you get tips from people more so when it's a a celebrity or a stylist or a designer or who are you getting tipped off from to go and shoot these people in their fashion? Everybody. I mean, Everybody. All, all the above and then some. It could be the restaurant owner who wants his restaurant promoted. It could be the it could be the valet guy who wants a picture in the background with that celebrity. It could be. I mean, it is. How long is a piece of string? I mean, it goes on and on and on. It's everybody. I've had the weirdest phone calls, the weirdest phone calls. Um, yeah, pretty much everyone from the, the celebrities themselves who, you know, if, if you have a new movie coming out, you need to be out there. You need to be seen. You need to be in the public eye. There's always that fear because... Celebrity personalities are kind of narcissistic. I don't want to say that, but they, they kind of are. And there's always this fear of being forgotten and not being in the limelight. And why was such and such getting that Balenciaga deal and not me? Why was she on the Versace runway and not me? And then it becomes this very competitive you know, environment where, oh, well, you know what? Tonight I'm going to wear this and go out and get photographed in it. And then... And and that's where we are today compared to yeah. ten years ago. It was it was not like that, you know. Got to stay relevant at all times, not they just definitely. not just when your biggest movie is hitting, but in between your movies. Absolutely. Um, so so your first setup you. shot though, how does that happen though? Did the celebrity like you know when the celebrity reached out to you, like how how did they get in touch with you? Was it like someone you were papping for a while and they're like, hey, what's your number? Like give me your number and we'll set it up next time. Like how does it's it go down? Definitely relationship building. I mean, the, the, I don't want to say any names, but there, there's some that used to drive out of their house and flip me off every day for, for mm -hmm. six months. 
<laughs> and today we, we, we're very good friends, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then there's some that know the game from day one. A lot of these new style celebs, I want to call them social media celebs, TikTokers, they, they really figured it out nice and early. And I think the whole paparazzi thing has got sensationalized rather than being those horrible, creepy guys in the bushes with the long lenses, you know, outside schools like you used to. You know what I mean? It's not that mm -hmm. anymore. And the new generation is a lot more open to it. They're a lot more aware of how the industry works. And, and they know how to use it in their favor. I mean, they know they're going to get photographed. They're famous. They're going to walk out on the street and it's going to happen whether they like it or not. They are now a public figure. It's not something you switch on and off. Although some so, of them die. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you have a pink Lamborghini like Justin Bieber does and you live in Beverly Hills and you eat at the Ivy every day, you can't come out and be upset about being photographed. I mean, you are yep. literally asking for it at that point. How how common is it for celebs to do photo uh, set up photos? Let me let me re-ask that again because I fucked up that whole question. <laughs> how how often is it that a celeb sets up a photograph session with the paparazzi? I would say very common, but I would also say they might not make it that obvious. I'll give you an example. Uh, we'll go back to Bieber. He he lives in a private community. Mm -hmm. It has four exits. One of them, they're, they're probably two miles apart. The photographers only ever sit on one exit. When he comes out of that exit, he knows who's going to be out there. It's not rocket science at that point. If you don't want to be seen by these guys, you have three other options. And it's been like that for, for years. Mm -hmm. And every time they come out of that door they're dressed to the T and they go somewhere very nice and they make sure you, you see it, a handbag and they make sure you see the, you know, the shoe brand and, 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 and they look good. Mm -hmm. So it's not a constant harassment like it used to be. And I'll be honest, it used to be with Britney, with Paris, with, with Lindsay, it was constant harassment. It was, it was, it was hardcore, man. <laughs> it was, it was intense. Um, they now have the option. We're almost like a taxi stand. Everybody sat on this one street waiting, and if they come down there, they know we're going to be there. And they they want to be seen. They want to show it off. They want they want their photo taken that day. Why else would they come out of that door? You know, they've got three yeah. other gates to pick. Um, G yeah. Give me give me one story from the crazy days, the Britney Paris Lindsay. Give me one of your wildest stories of maybe it was a pap crush that was intense or a situation that went down that is really memorable in your mind from the heydays of 2007. I so many. But I think, I think my personal favorite, and, and it's as insane as it is, uh, Brittany used to have this habit of going to Target at four in the morning. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to go shopping at 4 a.m.? Right. And there was 25, 30 guys waiting outside the house, sometimes 40 to 50 cars waiting outside the house. And she'd go into Target and, and it was so competitive. I remember sometimes when she got out of the car, there was so many people in front of me that I could never even see Brittany. I didn't, I never even saw, I laid eyes on her because it was just rows and rows like a soccer game of people in front of me with cameras. And of course, if monkey see, monkey do, if one guy does it, everyone has to do it. And one guy would just run into Target. The next thing you know, you got 35 to 40 guys running around in Target, knocking shit over it, just trying to get this picture of her with the shopping cart. And it was just the biggest mess. And people were just stood there, gobsmacked, looking at this, going, is this really freaking happening right now? Does, was, does any does anyone even wait on Britney these days? Because I feel like I don't see a lot of photos of her other than she covers her social media with so much content that I don't see any really pap photos of her anymore. No, it's it, it, she's, she's made it hard. She's one of the ones that probably doesn't want to be photographed, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, no, I, the, 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 the short answer is no, nobody ever goes there. Maybe once a month, month one guy will go and try his luck. Not really. It's it's those days ago. How is how is Haley Bieber? 
how do I say the beaver quiet? Um, just like doesn't like talk to you guys or she just kind of does she ignore you or like if you're papping her does she she won't address you she just walks does she like cover her face how does it like go down with her she has never even said hi to me and i photographed her probably more than anyone for over two years really no, never once never once that's anyway. so interesting because i feel like she comes across as like a, a pretty cool girl i'm or woman i am i'm surprised that she wouldn't be saying hi i'm not saying she's not cool I'm not, you know, but it's certain, yeah, that she has that barrier against us, I guess. It's mm. just not, yeah. But I get it. At some point, you're just like, thanks, like, thanks, Haley, or hey, how you doing today? Like, it's just like some quick, like, just That's what it is. part of the Hi, game. No it's answer. so weird. I Thank totally you, understand what you mean. No yeah. <laughs> I totally get it. It's like, hey, have a good day or have a great holiday. Have a great, you know, like, it's that little okay, thing. That being said, you guys deal with that, you know. There is something to be said if you say, hey, how are you doing today? And nothing comes back from the person. That's kind of weird, right? Like even I the biggest really stars crazy. on the planet will normally right. respond to that and just go, I'm really good. Thanks. How about you? All right. Have a good day. And that's kind of your cue of like, I don't want to have a conversation, but I'm being cordial. Absolutely. I'm not a threat. I'm not here to harass you. I got what I needed. Thank you very much. I'm out of here. You know, mm -hmm. um, Others are very talkative, you know, but Haley and Kendall, I found they just, mm -mm. they just, they just ignore it. you. They, it's like funny. I totally know what you mean, Bobby, because it's one of those things like, oh, thank you so much. And you like say thank you to them. And then usually sometimes you say like, oh, have a good day, guys. Like there's some like just one of those little have a good day, guys, you know, or, you know, or happy holidays or something. But nothing, nothing, nothing. And yeah, I mean, I get yeah. it. I find it very strange with Haley, yeah. Because it's uh, over three years, maybe. Ever since she got married to Justin, I've been photographing her. Not mm -hmm. once have I got a high back. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I, gotta, I have to ask you a question. You can say no. You don't want to answer it. But is there anyone that you have done a setup photo shoot with before that you can actually say who has done it? Because we've talked to a lot of celebs that have, admitted to doing set of photo shoots like Brian Austin Green and a couple others. Is there anyone that has done a photo shoot that you're like, yeah, yeah, like we've done it. It's, but it's not like something we hide. Absolutely. Um, Julia Fox. She's my girl. I love her. She, she, she likes me. We, we get along. We're, we're all we're practically friends. Um, she really understands the game. She has no shame in saying she, she, she's, she's the realest person I know in the yeah. industry. She will come across. Yeah, she she was actually on the Marauders uh, podcast the other day, and 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 she openly said that she only shoots with me, and that you know that's um, her paparazzi, and that. that and she's she's big into the whole fashion thing, so I get it. You know, she's definitely someone that I see her out a lot, so she has worked that, and, and she's succeeding in it. Respect, a lot of respect for what she's done and what she's achieving. Um, I wouldn't say she came from nowhere because she was an actress before all this blew up, mm -hmm. but I think she took the fashion game and just really, really played it right. And I think she yeah. still is. I think she's, I, I really do have a lot of respect for the way she does things. And, so and she's is she going against the whole script of, you know, oh my God, I can't be seen with a paparazzi and oh my, cause they're all, they're, they're all doing it. And I'm not going to lie to you. It's not just Julia. They're all doing it. With, maybe not with me, but they're definitely all up to I mean, we all know the Kardashians are doing it. We, we all know the Kardashians start as a whole game of doing it. I, I've never gone down that route. Maybe once or twice there's been a situation where I've had to do it, fill in for someone and do it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, um, which was really awkward, to be honest, and I'll tell you that story <laughs> if you want. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, buckling up. We're ready for that awkward story. <laughs> so I'm sitting at home watching TV, eight o'clock at night. I get a phone call saying, do you want to shoot Kim Kardashian? I said, sure. And I get to, all right, so it's Nobu 830. I, you know, I'll get my stuff together and I, I go to Nobu and I'm waiting outside and, 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 and the, uh, the car pulls in and you can't miss you. you, you I, I know you said you don't know number plates, but when is 
when a flat gray Rolls Royce with gray wheels and gray grill and gray <laughs> everything. It's her, right? It's just that. And the bodyguard cards come in and, and uh, they pull into the place and I'm ready, you know, relaxed. I've been asked to be here. And they come out and the bodyguards are all over me. And I lost my cool at that point. I said, bro, I was sitting in the comfort of my own home watching TV. You called and requested me to come out here. <laughs> Insult me in public? Like, what was that? Like, was that just to, like, bring attention to yourselves? What is this? What are you doing right now? And sure enough, on the way out, you know, everybody opened up and she did the, she did the parade and I got my pictures. But that was just, I was just like, why did you have to put that act on? What, what, what was the need of all that? Why didn't you just tell me to come at 10 o'clock so I could shoot you on the way out if you didn't want to get shot on the way in, you know? Yeah. Was, that, that, that's the one part I don't like. They, we're still scapegoats to a certain extent, you know? I was going to say, that that is the one thing I've never understood of. If you'd like your photo being taken, why do we pretend like we don't like our photo being taken? And why do you pin it on the camera guys out there? And I, I will never forget this episode of, uh, it was the Tyra Banks show when Nicole Richie was on it. And she sat there and like cried about how her, she, you know, her life is horrible because she gets followed around LA and they paparazzi chase her. And I'm like, you're the same woman driving up and down Robertson collecting paparazzi. Like you don't have to drive down Robertson Boulevard, but you did. And now you complain about it. Like stop throwing the blame. On, like you don't need the pity party. Just take the photos Enjoy the time and move along with your life here. Don't blame it on that someone. Is the older generation. That is the when I say the older generation, I don't mean that as a you know an, an insult. I, I'm not trying to call her old by any means, but that is the first generation I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. They were they were a nightmare, and she's part of that nightmare. They were they were a complete nightmare. They would go somewhere, and if we were there, they'd turn around and go home. And I'm not saying that Nicole Richie did, never had a bad interaction. I'm sure she had. A thousand bad interactions with you know camera guys in the street because it was intense back then i'm just saying don't make it as if they're chasing you around the streets when you drive down robertson literally to collect them because that's where you know they're going to be and then that's, that way. was my problem the, the headache pose the headache pose this one that yeah. kills me when they come out like this and it's like look i know you need to be photographed i know yeah. you want to be photographed I know you've got a new movie coming out next week. I know, you know, you just had a Nike contract and you're wearing Nike head to toe. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. So when you, let me ask you this, going back to the setup shot stuff, do you, like, how do you, what do you say? Like, all right, let's, let's, this is what we're going to do. I want you to just walk down the street. Like, let's say, what's his name? Sophia Richie. Sophia Richie comes out. Do you, do you talk to urban fans? Say, hey, Sophia, just walk down the street. Take, cause honestly, it takes really like, 12 seconds like hey i just need four photos like brrr, there you go there's the photos so like is that how you do it just do you just say walk down the street and i'll get it real quick boom there you go i don't get to choose i i gotta take what's given i wish i could i wish i could are just you, direct you just, around and stand this way and walk that way and turn around and I get, are you I, just given kind of a location like the person's going to be here just make sure you get them coming out absolutely Gotcha. Interesting. Now, what if you if you do miss a shot? Are you allowed to be like, uh, stop, stop, stop? Like, I didn't get the shot because they know they need that shot being out there. No, nothing. No, you really? All they get. <laughs> so, but what are the benefits of them doing it? Do like, let me ask you this: like, someone do some of these celebrities ask to get paid on the photos that get sold? I think they used to. Um. With me personally, I've never had anyone asking me for money for the pictures that get sold. Do you uh, ask them, do they reach out to you and say, hey, can you send me those photos so I could post on my social media? Um, they don't ask. They just post. And I don't know where <laughs> they get them from. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> but they just post. And I, it, it does help me. It does help me. I, I usually do reach out and say, hey, could you possibly add a tag? And, and, and some do and some don't. But... But I know others and other agencies, they, they definitely sue celebrities for doing that, which I think is wrong. That's not, you know, you can't, you can't bite the hand that feeds you to that level. I, I think that comes down to when people get a little more desperate in the industry and they're realizing their photos aren't selling 
and people are stealing, they're like, oh, how how else can we make money? I think is what it comes down 100%, to. Hundred percent, a hundred, and I don't respect that at all. And I've never done it. Um, I've been asked to do it when I used to work for agencies. I do my own thing now, and the agencies used to be like, hey, but but you know, we can get a lot of money for this. And I'm like, yeah, but this is not a McDonald's where you can just kick out a customer and a hundred others will come in. Yeah. There's about a dozen clients we have in this in, in this industry and you can't really go around pissing them off in that level because they're not gonna they're not gonna forget. They don't suffer from amnesia, they're gonna remember you. It's, it's that guy with a beard, man. He sued me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you we we always hear about female celebrities doing setup photo shoots, but is there male celebrities also out there setting up their photo shoots with paparazzi Absolutely. as well? Yeah. And again, it's not always a complete, hey, I'm going to be here at four o'clock. But there's a guarantee right now, well, in about an hour's time at 7 p.m., if you go to Craig's, if you go to Catch, if you go to uh, Nobu, there's going to be guys outside with cameras. And they know mm -hmm. that. You know, that, that they'll go. It's a way to do a setup without it actually being a setup. It's one of the toughest the couples to ever, absolutely is. It absolutely is a loophole, especially when you have a pink Lamborghini and yeah. the whole world and luminous, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, yeah, there's there's a lot of ways, there's a, you know, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat. And, and Yeah, Bob, you've been doing this for a long time. Have you ever did a setup shot where a person was dating someone and it was someone new? But or, you know, the girl or guy could have been famous and they want to kind of uh, out them as like being they want to out themselves as a new couple even before oh. they're even out there. Does that happen a lot? Well, you get caught up in some wars sometimes. So, so definitely. Yes, um, it does happen a lot. It does happen a lot. Yeah, that someone oh, in the yeah. relationship is setting the other person up. Yes, a that and b that, you know, Let's say a couple splits up and the guy is out with a girl, mm -hmm. well, you know, make sure they get photographed. I don't want to say calls a paparazzi because they might not call a paparazzi, but they will make sure they get photographed. And then you've got the girl seeing the picture tomorrow going, oh, no, hell no. <laughs> 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 going and doing the same thing. And then they start calling, hey, you know. We're going to go to the beach today. Oh, you know what? We're going to go to Six Flags today. And, and, and it, you start, it starts escalating on you when you get mm -hmm. pulled into it, you know? And it's. Have, have you ever been contacted by uh, a less famous celebrity dating a more famous celebrity and they want to make sure the world knows because that helps them out with their PR? That's a TikTok special. <laughs> TikTok is great. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. But, so, you know, they give me some impossible uh, tasks, though, when, you know, where they're in some really impossible locations. Oh, I need mm -hmm. this picture. You know, what am I supposed to do? I can't get that. But, yeah, oh, that definitely happens. So actually, I want to ask you about this, and I want your expertise on this. There's, a, there's a, some photos going on right now that – everyone's buzzing about it's dan reynolds from the group imagine dragons he's now dating minka kelly and the photos of them that they're a new couple do you think that was a setup shot no my friend took those i know it wasn't it wasn't a setup shot it actually, well which which set of pictures the one so, hand in hand walking out in broad daylight the one in broad daylight yeah i am a hundred percent that was not a setup shot but I'm also, I'm not a, <laughs> it wasn't a setup shot, but I certainly think they saw the photographer. Okay. Okay. I've got another one for you. What do you think? Cause I, you've seen probably a lot of PR relationships and you've seen a lot of real relationships. Thoughts on Pete Davidson and Emily Radzikowski. <laughs> oh, I've been talking about this. <laughs> All right. Um, I would say it's, it's, it's a genius move on Emrata's behalf. Mm -hmm. I would also say it's a genius move on his behalf. I think it's a symbiotic benefit. A symbiotic move. press opportunity or a great relationship? I mean, I'm sure they're having fun. I'm not saying they're not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also sure they're very aware of how... I mean, 
Okay, so supposedly, allegedly, I don't know if this is true or not, but when you read in the press, she's dating several people at the same time. Yeah. The DJ, well, Pete, Brad Pitt, everyone. And those, everyone seems to know about every person she dates. Quality, and there's pictures of them all, so it's not just a rumor that's, that's continuously getting pictures. Why do you go and sit courtside? That's that's the part that gets me. Like, there's only one reason. You right. want books. You yep. want headlines. You want to be in the media. You want to be seen. I mean, you know. Hundred uh, percent. That's my opinion. I, I, I if it's just the, you know, especially when. All the other guys have already been exposed. <laughs> like, everybody <laughs> knows you're dating four guys at once. Uh, yeah. yeah. When you when you work someone like Justin Bieber, is there like in a um, you know obviously he he he's he's not like somebody you need to hide in front of. He kind of just goes about his business. But is there like sort of an agreement or like how does it work with him? Like a compromise where it's like, hey, he's I'm going to give you the photos now. Don't follow me or don't get too close or you know, okay. what, how does that work? I never hide from anyone these days. That's, I just don't anymore. And I, I'm at that age where if they say not today, I'll, I'll probably, I'll, I'll leave. But I always, I, I always get seen. I know a lot of people don't work like that, but, but it makes my life easier. I'm too old to be hiding from people. Man. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm at that point. Um, Justin is one of the toughest ones. He's a moody guy. You know, one day he'll come out and go, hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Oh, what are you eating? What are you drinking? What did you do last night? Da, 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 da. Get the pictures, get your sound bite, as you know, because you do video. And everybody walks away happy. The next day he'll come out and go, you guys here again? Da, 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 da. I'm sick of you. And it's like, whoa, is this the same dude? <laughs> what happened? Like, and everyone's allowed to have bad days. I get that. I'm not saying, I'm not judging that. Um see the problem is those days that you're talking about when he pulls his car over and he says all right guys get your shot right here but don't follow me we already know he's going somewhere absolutely amazing where we really <laughs> <laughs> don't follow me because this is going to be the best photo shoot of your life and then it's just like oh no he's doing it again oh my god he's probably going to six flags or disneyland or somewhere really awesome where you really <laughs> want to be getting these pictures and instead he's just on the sidewalk looking down the cameras doing this and like, oh no he did it again but again, yeah. you got to kind of give and take. So you just got to be like, all right, bro, all right, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Bobby, looking back on your career, what is the biggest shot you've gotten to this point? When you say biggest shot, you mean? I don't know if it's the big, maybe the, the most memorable. Well, first, so, like, you say it, and I instantly go, oh, yep, I know that photo shoot, or I know that photo. Um, one of the ones that meant the most to me was the first pictures of Megan and Prince Harry when they came. That was the first picture of them together in LA when they were out handing out food to people. All right. Yeah, See? We got that one. And I know which one that is. Really? That's crazy. Yeah. That one, yeah I, rem I remember um, that photo session. My personal favorite in terms of fashion is 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 the Julia Fox with, with the cut jeans as, as a top. Okay. That one is my personal favorite. But I think one of the biggest shots that I ever got was Michael Jackson a week before he passed. Really? That's Where was he at? Walking out of the hospital in Bev medical building in Beverly Hills. And yep. he came out, you know, did the peace sign with the mask and the sunglasses and all that. And then a week later he Come was gone. So that was, was actually the photo that made you the most money, that one? No. Um, no there was a lot of, there was so many people there that day. There's no way, like that was a, yeah. a pap crush day. So no. Beverly Hills is a shit show. You're yeah. never going to make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, money wise, I've, I've got three pictures that, that were, um, six figure pictures. In, wow. In the Dang. Um, one of them was, I was a staff photographer at the time and, uh, I was sent to Oregon and an English soccer player, a certain English soccer player was there and he was kind of notorious 
liking to be with strippers and, and you know, those type of girls. <laughs> okay. And, although he was married. And he was at a point where... Wait, did this photo... Sh sh these photos not ever come out? Is that why you're not talking about him? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, okay. I was like, why are you being so secretive? Okay, so it's someone... An English soccer player in where'd you say? Oregon. Oregon. At the Oregon. Nike headquarters, actually. And they sent me there and they said, Bobby, and, and, and this was Dan Lyons, big pictures owner. Um, this was my first year in LA. Bobby, don't don't take a picture unless he's doing something wrong. I was like, this is gonna be a shit weekend, man. Like, he's <laughs> not gonna go to the Nike headquarters and not do anything. He nailed it on the second day. Guy went to a strip club came out with a chick we got the pictures and and i don't know the dealings the ins and outs because i was but you know that, that that those photos were purchased and never put out to the market yes yeah okay me personally never done that since i have never ever ever sold a picture to back to a celebrity end of the day we're journalists we're here to bring news we're not blackmailers we're not you know i know it happens a lot a lot at, it's not my thing. It's mm -hmm. not. I don't believe in it. I don't. I, even if it's a million dollars. Okay, a million dollars, yeah. I'll probably think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't but you know what I've that. seen before? Not so much as a blackmail. I have seen photos where they're like, hey, we're pitching it out to the world. If you just want to be one of the other people we're pitching it to, so you can be involved in in the negotiations. I've seen that happen before where it's not like, Hey, right. I'm not going to release this, but if you want to be a part of the like bidding session, bidding. Right. then by all means, I'm going to allow you to be one other person in the bidding session and everyone else is going to see it anyway, you know, in regards to the other agencies around the world, but you can join in. I've seen that before. I, I've seen that before, but it still hurts my feelings. I mean, we a hundred percent. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying <laughs> I've seen that word. It's, it's not, it's not so much blackmail because. No, People are already that. finding out about it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And it, but the thing is to me, we're, ultimately we are journalists. And to me, a journalist is, is the voice of the people. We're here to report and bring back, you know, facts. That's what we're here to do. And, and if right, we okay. start hiding well, facts. Well, all right, Bobby, what were the other two photos that hit over six figures? The the Harry and Meghan actually did. Really? Yeah, it was during lockdown. There was nothing going on anywhere else in the world. And this, you know, the, the English press is absolutely obsessed with them. Okay, so the Harry and Meghan photo that you first got that made you over six figures. Not me. Was, um, well, they made the, that six photo six sold six. for an agency. Six figures yeah. came in. Is yeah. this more of Europe that's buying the photos, America that's buying the photos? Where is all this money coming from for Meghan and Harry? That one actually went absolutely everywhere. It's usually a big chunk. I mean, you know, you used to buy pictures. It's usually a big chunk coming from the first 24-hour exclusive, whether mm -hmm. it's online or a newspaper or a magazine. Back in the day, magazines used to buy world exclusives, but it's very rare now. They don't have that budget anymore. Yeah. But um, and then from there is the TV stations and the runs and the reruns and the reruns and uh, and some of the blogs pay some real good money. Wow. OK, what's the third photo? The third photo is Ben and Jen back together for the first time. Wow. Mm. So and how does that where was, shot was that the one where is that her his house or her house in L.A. or something? It was a really crappy, dark, shit set of pictures, to be quite honest. But it was the first time they, they held hands and walked into a hotel for, for a dinner. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like a couple of back shots, a couple of really horrible side shots. It was, I mean, if I show you the picture, you're going to say, what, these made you six figures? But, but they did. It was did. The proof. It was the proof. It was, the, it was that scoop that you said these days it does still happen here and there. It does here and there, but... But yeah. So how, like the Ben and J Lo. So how do you kind of break that down? How do you get a tip about them being somewhere, or them back together? Like how does that all come about? I actually got called in by another photographer. 
who called me and said, bro, I need backup. It was it was the craziest way it went down, actually. So he calls me and says, bro, I need backup. Um, J-Lo just, just went into this hotel and I couldn't get any shots and I need your help to get the pictures coming out. So, all right. Of course. And I was literally around the corner by luck. So I turn around, I go, and I get out of the car and we're having a chat. And this this car comes down the road and, and you know, I'm good with number plates. So I said, if that's blah, 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 number plate, that's actually Ben's car. And as it turned in and we see the back of it, it is the number plate. So it's Ben's car. We're both getting really excited. We grab our cameras, we run up, and we're expecting Ben to come out of the car. They both come out of the car. <laughs> and they hold hands and they walk in. Turns out the car that he followed and he thought it was J-Lo was just a security car that had come ahead of time just to secure the place before they show up. So, wow. Yeah, it was it's just sometimes. And we're, we're, when you guys were taking the photos, were your flashes going off? Like, did they see or it just dark? Yeah, and so It was just dark, yeah. We, wow. Yeah, at certain times, you don't take that flash risk. <laughs> that was one of them. That's yeah. crazy. That was crazy. That was, it was just, the way it went down was, was really nuts. Oh, man. Yeah. So, so those are the three biggest ones. Um, but yeah, the MJ one, that one sits kind of, cause it's, it's history. I, yeah. um, another one that means a lot to me was when I went to the Caribbean and I shot Amy Winehouse and her, and her guy. And, way back I, in the day. Way back in the day. And I ended up getting arrested for that. <laughs> that was an experience. Yeah. Dude, I remember when I first started at TMZ, Amy Winehouse was like, she, that was the heyday of Amy Winehouse. She was everywhere. Her and Pete Doherty just doing wild things in the streets. Or I remember just getting photos. I'd wake up in the morning and like look through the websites. And I think it was like, again, big pictures or Bauer Griffin or whatever I was looking through in the morning. And it would be her like out climbing under or climbing under fences or like her feet were bleeding through her little like yeah. ballerina yeah. shoes yes. or she was walking down the street smoking. I mean, it was like every day was something crazy about Winehouse. And that was what I would go to every day before it was Kim and Brittany and Lindsay. It was it was Winehouse. She was such an icon. She, and it's so sad how that went down. Yeah. But she, she really was an icon. I, I used to love her. I used to love her as an artist, and I used to love her personality. And she was one. She was one of the cool ones. She, yeah, was, she was cool. Oh well, my yeah. god, Bobby! I can't believe we were running out of time already because this is. You are gonna be coming back. I'm just letting you know that now. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I feel like we just got like to the tip of the iceberg of all the fun stories that you have, and I'm like, how are we already like this far into an episode already? We're, we are going to have to have you back like soon. So actually, I yeah, I w yeah, no, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Let's wrap it up with a speed round. Bobby, we're going to ask you a bunch of quick questions. And we just want to kind of know like the first person that comes to mind for some of these people. Is that cool? Okay, let's do it. All right, Dax, I'm going to start off. I'm going to say the funniest celebrity you've you've shot. The one who's just fun, cool, good energy. Just funny. Julia Fox. Who is it? Julia. Julia Fox, for sure. All right. How about the Please. person that just understands the business i would say julia fox as well but i would give that credit to kanye west as well okay ultimately i think kanye west really understands the business and i think he's the brain behind uh the whole kardashian thing as well no oh, I'd, I'd give it to kim over kanye personally but go for it it's your yeah. opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> All right. Who is the most difficult person? Without a doubt, Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> I mean, the guy lives Donnie Brasco in real life. I mean, is the cap, <laughs> is the toothpick to make sure the FBI doesn't read his lips as he's talking down the street? Um, it, he lives Donnie Brasco. Like, yeah. he is. Yeah, no, without a doubt. All right. Yeah. Who is the, like, prettiest woman in person? I shoot models, man. They're all pretty. <laughs> but who's the one that like, you're just like, oh my God, if people saw how beautiful she was in person, like they would just be astonished. 
Okay, so this is a taste thing, right? To me, again, I've got to go back to my favorite Julia because I think she is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but, you know, Elsa Hosk is a stunning woman. Um, this shoot models. We hear, we hear Kate Beckinsale probably mentioned the most with that question. Really? Yeah. You agree? Can I plead the fifth on that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard, I, I mean, I got another story. I heard Kate doesn't leave the house unless she has a full kind of squad kind of glamming her up too. So good for her. her. That's her business. That's, that's her, her bread and butter is being. You know what girl. She's doing. Absolutely. Mine's Miranda Kerr, by the way, just throwing that out there. Miranda Kerr is like an she, avatar to me. Super nice. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. She's and, very cool. Very nice. All right. Um, the strongest person, the one who, like celebrity that's just the most jacked. Oh, The Rock. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. On that same note, the best looking male in person. It's got to be Brad Pitt. He's a legend. Okay. I mean, there's not many women that have turned it down, right? <laughs> <laughs> the nicest celebrity. Okay, this is biased, but I'm gonna. Can I can I use my my favorite again? <laughs> Go for it. It's gonna have to be Julia Fox, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> she is nice to me. She is nice to strangers on the street that come up to her. I've never seen her turn away a fan. Paul Abdul too. Paul Abdul is. Paul Abdul. Fun. Paul Abdul is amazing. She's really cool. There'll be cars driving by honking saying Julia and she will literally stop and wave at him and just be nice. She will. St I mean, she is kind. She's so kind to everyone. And it blows me up. And I've told her, I said, how are you so kind to everyone? Like, I've, it's very rare to me to, to, to meet people like that. And, and she's really, really super nice to everybody. I know. I love it. All right. Who do you see anyone that's just not the nicest to like people around them? And I don't know if that's fans or paparazzi. Who's just not the nicest? Okay, this is a controversial answer, but I'm going to say mainly the British celebrities. Really? Uh, but I also think that's because the paparazzi in England are very different to the paparazzi in the US. They are still on that old school tip of really mm. upsetting people and being aggressive. But I've seen Harry Styles be really, really mean to his fans. Mean uh, to his uh, own oh, fans? Oh, like putting little girls in tears. I, I've seen it with my own, and I know I should. This is controversial, but for sure, yeah. What what would he do? He covered his face and he said, "Get the f out of here, um, f off, uh, leave me the f alone." I'm brutal, brutal, yeah. Like two little girls, man. <laughs> Dang, yeah. that's wild. All right, yeah. All right. Um, I would say, who have you ever done a setup shot with Addison Ray? The no, but I'm not an official setup shot, but I see her very often and she's 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 amazing. Does That's she put all. herself into situations where she knows she's going to get photographed? Probably. OK, probably. I mean, she goes to <laughs> she goes to this workout spot that she knows I'm there 90 percent of the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah. is very sweet. though. But she's very cool. She's like she's just nice. I like, like her. Yeah. She is fun. Uh, you know, who, out of nowhere and she, she appreciates where she is right now, I feel. Who's the most playful celebrity that like enjoys, like they see the camera and they're like, oh, I'm going to be a goofball and have fun. I think that's actually Addison Rae. Yeah? Actually, yes, yes, for sure. She appreciates, she, she has fun with it, for sure. Okay. I mean, who, there was one time where we were wearing the same, the same sweater, me and her. And I was just like, oh, we, we, we have to take a twin picture. And she, <laughs> and she posed up. And it's the funniest. It's one of the most iconic. It's one of my favorite pictures with a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> just, just That's awesome. Funny guy. Yeah. Who is the grumpiest? The grumpiest? Oh, the list is long. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seth Rogen. Yeah. I can see really? that. Yeah. And he's rude, and he calls people cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I've, I've I've been around that. I don't even. Yeah, I actually. It's uh, he funny. he yeah. has that reputation for sure. Has yeah. a has a celebrity ever paid you not to take photos of them? And if so, who? I've never ever accepted that. 
and I know other people do. I have yeah. never accepted it. I just don't. I, I, no, it doesn't sit right with me. I don't do it. Okay. Have I been offered it? Possibly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I would do is say, I will delete these pictures, or maybe not today, but give me another date where we can meet up and I can get a picture. Fair. Okay. Yeah, I get it. All right. My last question for you, Bobby, is what's the wildest thing you've seen on the street not celeb-related? Uh, that's an easy one. Um, lockdown. Mm-hmm. Riots. I was out with my camera. I was in Santa Monica. And I, have, I would say about a dozen guys pulled a safe out of Chase Bank. Broad daylight. This is like broad daylight when all the windows are getting smashed and everything. And I've got my camera in my bag, obviously, because I just saw another photographer get his camera stolen by, by the looters. And these 12 guys all get together and smash this um, safe open. And they're all cooperating. They're working with each other to get this safe open. And there's a guy on the lookout, and they're banging it, and they're banging it. And I've got video of this and pictures, by the way. And and <laughs> plot twist. The, the safe opens and one of them pulls a gun out and says, no, 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 this is my money, right? Mm-hmm. Another one takes the gun off him and he's now holding the gun and he's aiming it in all sorts of directions. And I'm behind the car taking pictures of all this, right? I've got, I've got all the shots. I'll send you later if you want to see them. Wow. Yeah, I want to see these. Yeah. They actually made the Daily Mail as well. And uh, now the guy who's owned the gun, but no longer is holding the gun, called his friends. So there's now two or three cars pulling up from all sorts of directions with guys jumping out with guns, running around Santa Monica promenade. And you said that the safe was open. So could you see, was there just tons of money in it? There was, I mean, I was kind of across the street taking pictures from behind the car, but yeah, yeah, there was money that was open and there was money. And that's why they all got excited. But it was literally like guerrilla warfare in the middle of Santa Monica Boulevard. This it was, it was incredible. Most- yeah, you're going to have to send over those photos. We'll put them in our uh, private Facebook group so they can see. These <laughs> this was. sounds wild. It was it was really insane. Yeah. Oh, Bobby, you were such a fun guest. I'm telling you, you knocked it out of the park with just some of your answers, your life experiences. Like you go down is definitely one of my favorite guests we've ever had on here because it's hard to get people to open up about like the reality of what's happening in Hollywood and like say it how it is. And so I love that you are just so honest and uh, it, it really just a fun, fun interview. So thank you for coming on today. I, I really appreciate nice. it. And thanks thank to Adam for setting this that up. Was, that was a lot of fun. Actually. I was, I was dreading this for a minute going, <laughs> Oh my God, what have I got myself into? They're going to kill me. But no, no, we had fun. That was fun. No, this is really fun. And I'm telling you, we, we are going to get you back. We're going to put another date on the calendar because I feel like we didn't get through all of your stories. We we had to cut it off. 45 minutes was not long enough with Mr. Bobby. So we are going to get you back on here for sure. I will, love to, I will be here. And, I will be. And check out his Instagram just to kind of uh, see the people he runs into every day. I mean, his shots are beautiful, but then also he makes the beautiful even more beautiful. It's just – it's a fun account to follow. Like, who did Bobby run into today? And it's uh, it's great. It's Bobby underscore Pap underscore LA. That's correct, right? Yep, that's the one. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thanks for the shout out. Um, uh, um, yep, you'll see, you'll, you'll see it all. Thank you, Bobby, Bobby, so much. Appreciate it, man. He was great. Dude, that was such a fun episode. That's People fun. are going to love this. This was full inside Hollywood right here. Like, hearing it from his mouth, yes, celebs set up photos. I mean, we've talked about it 100 times. Sure. But hearing it from the guy who's getting these photos and saying, yes, we set him up, or, hey, the workaround is, it's not set up, but they're going to the places that they 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 know the camera's there, and it's so it's essentially a setup without calling a setup. Yeah, I mean Bobby's a great photographer. He's been around for a long time, so eventually, like like he did, like he said, he started as a paparazzi, and eventually these people are just like, "Hey, man, I'm seeing your photos. Let's like make this easier for both of us, or let's just work together." And that's what happened. Bobby's like evolution of his career is like working with these celebrities, and it's. 
it's exciting for him, but it's probably going to be unique and surreal. Like when like they start calling you and like you're starting to like hang, like befriend them. Like you you don't work together, but you work together. So it's got to be kind of cool. But I really enjoyed that conversation. Bobby's a good guy. Make sure you follow him on Instagram because he gets some awesome shots to these people. But uh, thank you guys for uh, always uh, showing us uh, some love and some listening. Uh, follow us on Instagram at Holly Raw Pod. We're also on TikTok. We're also on Facebook. We got this private Facebook group off the record where. It's almost like its own celebrity news RSS line where everyone can kind of, you know, figure out like what's going on in the entertainment news world, but also like kind of just spill tea and just kind of gossip with each other. I feel like they're our friends. Yeah. I feel like these people are our friends inside the Facebook group because they're the ones we're like talking to directly and reading their comments about the podcast or what happened on the, uh, you know, the last episode. Like I... I'm pretty obsessed with our our off the record Facebook yeah, group. Yeah, shout fun. out to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys uh, for listening again. Follow me at, at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at, at Dax Holt. We'll see you and guys next time. Please go to iTunes. Scroll to the bottom. Leave us a review so we can read it at the top of the show. We really appreciate. Uh, we say it all the time, but you guys have no idea how much these reviews really, really help us out in the algorithm and fo- push us up so other people see the podcast. So we really appreciate you taking the time. Yes. All right, that's it. We'll Peace. see you guys next week. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go.